Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sam, and today I wanna to talk to you about this knife, the Spyderco Capara. Now, before we get into it, I just wanna say thank you to everyone who has subscribed to this channel. Uh, I'm almost at 500 subscribers, and I wanna do a giveaway once we get there. So if you're not already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, and let's get to 500 so I can give something away. Getting into the specs, the overall length of the Capara is 8.27 inches with a blade length of three and a half inches. Closed, it's 4.69 inches. It weighs 3.3 ounces and the handle is a really nice carbon fiber. It is sporting the iconic deep carry pocket clip and it's reversible for tip up carry only. It has the trademark Spyderco compression lock and the blade itself is made of S30V steel with a full flat grind. The Capara comes out of the Tai Chung factory in Taiwan. As far as variations go, the only other version that you'll find of the Capara is the DLT exclusive version and 20 CV. This version also features contoured dark gray G10 handles. Initially, when you look at the Capara, you think to yourself, this is a really weird looking knife. Uh, but what I found is that the more and more I look at it, the more the design makes sense to me. But before we dive into that, let's just get a better understanding of this knife and where it comes from. The Capara is based on Australian knife maker Alistair Phillips' red back folder design. Now you may be asking yourself, what does Capara even mean? Capara is actually the name for a spider in Australia that has a distinctive feature to it. What this feature is, well, this feature is the spider has, you guessed it, a red stripe down the back of it, which is also seen in this knife as well, which is a cool little detail and design. Fun fact, the Capara spider belongs to the widow spider genus Latrodectus. So why does it look so different? Well, it goes back to the red back knife. Uh, when Alistair originally designed this knife, it was based on the need for a food prep knife. And I think you can really see that. It looks really similar to me, like a small paring knife, something like that. Another Spyderco knife that you could compare it to, uh, which I almost did instantly, was the Spidey Chef, which, as that name implies, is also a folder designed for food prep but also makes a great EDC knife. What I think separates these two though are the blade shapes. Now, full disclosure, I am not a chef and the world of chef knives is very deep and wide as far as makers and blade design and use go. Uh, there, each knife is usually used for very specific cutting tasks. So the chef, the Spidey Chef has more of a belly to it. So I think it's more ideal for chopping where the shape of the Capara has less belly. So to me, it makes more sense as a slicer with its full flat grind. But like the chef, the Capara is more than just a food prep knife. I think it can do any other normal task as well. The action on my Capara was phenomenal out of the box. As per most Spyderco knives, you can Spidey flick it. Uh, but what is interesting though, is that I found that it's easier to flick the Capara with my thumb uh, rather than with my middle finger. That might be due to the design of the handle though. Comparing it to a paramilitary two, the Capara has a skinnier handle, so the real estate for getting a proper flicking grip uh, forces me to be really aware of where my thumb and index finger are. When flicking a paramilitary two though, I don't really have to do that or be as aware because one, there's more room on the handle and two, muscle memory. I will add that I think that the carbon fiber handles play a factor too. They are smooth compared to most G10 handles on a standard Spyderco knife. So let's circle back to the design of the Capara. Like I mentioned earlier, the first time I saw it, I was honestly confused by the way it looked. Compared to most other Spyderco offerings, this one is one of the ones that really breaks the mold of your usual Glesser design, which I think is a good thing because variety is good, it's fun. Going back to the comparison to the Spidey Chef, these two are so similar in design, but what's interesting is that they're not designed by the same person. The Chef is designed by Marcin Schlies, who is also known for his collaboration in the Spyderco Schlies Bowie, the Techno 1 and 2, and the Swayback. Specifically, when both the Chef and the Capara are closed, you see how they both have this flat area that goes to a rounded angle as you move down the handle to the clip. And yeah, that might be a comparison that's stretching it a little bit for you, but to me, it makes sense and I can see it in the handle more than the blade. Another thing I fell in love with in the design of this knife is that it's really meant to hug your pocket. And what I mean by that is that when you slide it into your pocket, it naturally aligns itself with the back part of it, giving you as much space as possible in the pocket for other items, such as a wallet or a phone. So that's a quick review of the Capara. I really enjoyed this knife. And while the price tag is on the steeper side at $233, I still think it's a great knife due to its unique design and practical use factor. 
I would love to see this in more variations and uh, different blade steels like S90 V or Magna Cut. Magna Cut would be great because it's meant for food prep. Now, if different handle materials is something you're after, then you're in luck because there are a lot of options out there specifically from Rips Garage Tech, which I'll link down below. So I just wanna say thank you again to everyone for watching. And remember, we will do a 500 subscriber giveaway once we get there. If you aren't already, go ahead and subscribe. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.